Welcome back once again. No, let me start it over. Hashtag was on your face. I moved the camera. <laughs> I saw him moving it, but I didn't think the logo would be over his face. Welcome back once again. Fans of Hashtag Sports, Hashtag Nation, and Bill's Mafia, what's up? Uh, we just cut our episode, the live episode. If you haven't checked it out, please go check it out on YouTube, iTunes, or Spotify. Uh, talking about the Ed Oliver deal. And, you know, if you want to go check out the video, I'm not going to make a, I'm not going to have spoilers for you guys. You're going to watch the video. Uh, but a great point was brought up by Ryan in it was, you know, being it was usually an like, adequate point, adequate. <laughs> <laughs> that being said, um, it was a point of, you know, being usually doesn't make these moves. You know, why sign Oliver now? I mean, it, it raised some red flags. So all of us have to draft one. We did a random drawing. Ryan went first, Paul went second, and I'm obviously drafting cleanup. So we're each going to pick an edge rusher that the Buffalo Bills possibly could sign. Um, I'll I'll take Justin Houston just because nine and a half sacks last season. Uh, I'm I'm going with Melvin Ingram. I don't think he's going to crush you financially. What I would like to do, I, I mean, I'm going to go back in the wayback machine for Paul. I'm going to get Leonard Floyd. And I'm going to give him $10 million. But you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to build in a voided year. I'm going to make it two years. You know, they, it's a similar situation that they did with uh, Emmanuel Sanders. If you guys remember, they had a, they only really had Sanders for one year. They built in a voided year for him. I think what you do is at the age of 30, you build an avoidable year. You can always extend him if you wanted to. But in order for, for some cap relief, you give him a $10 million deal, build an avoided year, make it five a year. If he performs like you think he's going to perform, then you go into next season with three defensive ends that could wreak havoc on opposing quarterbacks next year. So, um, and I, th I think you can get him for that deal. I think he would take that that type of a deal, and then if it's voided and he gets offered something more somewhere else, then he'll do that. But there's there's a lot of defensive ends that are going to be names that people are really familiar with. And the nice thing is Buffalo plays a very traditional base uh, across that defensive line. So it's it's you're not looking at anything uh real fancy right you're not looking for a real special skill set you're looking for guys who like to murder uh murder the quarterback <laughs> that's that's all you're interested in run lanes gap integrity don't care about that <laughs> you don't care about that right how many years did we have to watch mario <laughs> addison set the edge you're like oh this is so exciting <laughs> look at mario addison set the edge Good, good job. Oh, wow. <laughs> to hell with that. To hell with that. You need somebody who's going to go and 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 absolutely sit on top of a quarterback's chest in the middle of a pocket. That's what you want. That's what you need. I think you are looking for a guy that, that brings some nasty because if you, if you do bring in another edge guy, obviously you're going to have to trim your rosters down. So if we looked at the bu current Buffalo Bills rosters, you know, Ryan brought up a great point on a couple shows ago. You know, Shaq Lawson brings some nasty. Jordan Phillips brings the nasty. Obviously, Jordan Phillips is an interior defensive lineman, but if they're the enforcers, so you need a guy obviously that, that wants to kill somebody on this defensive end, and you have to figure out what is the length that this guy is going to end up playing with Vaughn out. Obviously, we're going to we're talking about a guy that you're putting across from Rousseau. We're not talking about replacing Rousseau. We're talking about a guy you could put across from Rousseau mm. and fill that void left by Von Miller for how many games it is. If he, if he still comes back week one, obviously this is this discussion probably is probably moot. But the point is, I agree with you, Paul. You want a guy that's going to come in there on those third down packages, could be a rotational player. This is an opportunity maybe for a one year at a modest market value and then cash in with Buffalo, a, a you know, system I'm already comfortable with, things like that. So I think it depends on where Bean wants to go. If he can convince a Leonard Floyd, that would be it to me, the probably preferred outcome. I think he's going to come a little bit cheaper than Ngakwe. I'm not, I mean, Ngakwe is probably going to be in the De DeAndre Hopkins realm in terms of oh, okay. uh, annual money, right? He's going to be the last two years. He's made $13 million a year. I don't see him making much less, if less at all than that. Um, so then you get down to a Leonard Floyd. Is he in the $8 million a year range production wise? Probably. Does he see this as a one year tryout for a Buffalo Bills team that he could see himself long term? Maybe, maybe that's a selling point. Maybe you can get him at seven, six and a half, seven million dollars. So I think I think if you're going the route of this is a tryout, 
come in a little bit less than maybe what you could get on the open market, but let's talk about the future. Um, Leonard Floyd would be my choice. Well, and I think this is sort of the time of year where like you have to judge how badly do you want the player's previous contract to look. So like a player like Leonard Floyd, right, is coming off a near $14 million deal. You're not going to get that, right? Like yeah. you you leveraged what you had at the time. You got yourself a nice deal. But the fact of the matter is you're not at a place where you're going to be getting that deal again, right? Mm-hmm. So like a player like Leonard Floyd, you, Buffalo might offer seven and a half to a player like him. And yeah. while that is not an unreasonable number, uh, if you were to talk about what his number would have been when free agency opened, it's probably close to double that based off of where his contracts were. Yeah. So the market is really fluid when it comes to this, especially since there's so many defensive ends that are available. Buffalo might be able to get a very veteran player at a very good deal just simply because there's a bevy of options. But at the end of the day, if you had somebody busting down your door, giving you the money that you wanted, you would you would be signed right now. And there's just not. So let's talk realistic. Let's come back down to earth. Right. I mean, I say that when I do work with people and I work doing contract negotiation, like what's your number? Cool. Let's come down to earth and let's talk about what a real number is. Right. And let's talk about the realistic situation that you're in. And Mm -hmm. Paul's absolutely right. It's going to take one guy to sign. Right. It's going to take Yannick Ngakwe signing for, you know, I don't know, $10 million a year or a one year, $10 million deal. Everybody else is going to fall in line behind that because I think you can make the argument that he's the best he's the best of on the market right now. I agree with that. Yeah. And, yeah. and if you go and if he signs at $10 million, you go to Leonard Floyd right away and you go, we'll give you six and a half. We'll give you seven. That's about where you are when it comes to production wise age. All those things are working against you. If a 28 year old Yannick Ngakwe signs for 10, 11 million dollars, everybody slots in behind him um, mm-hmm. and, and it makes it a lot easier to negotiate at that point. Yeah. And then, I, like I, that's a, that's a point I was, I was going to try to bring up was the fact that these guys are all available guys like that all everyone right. on this list is still available right and you, you factor in the you you factor in a couple other things their age obviously we talked about it a little bit before you, the fact that buffalo is a destination that guys want to go because it's a winning culture and a winning franchise and you think you think of um you think of the point of you, in nfl you don't get paid for what you did you get paid for what you're going to do and if if the shelf if you have a shelf life coming into Buffalo where hey, we just need you for seven weeks, eight weeks, nine weeks, then you'll be a rotational guy, you know more than that. I mean, people have seen what the rotation looks like in Buffalo. It's already well documented. Now, unless unless Sean McDermott decides to change that drastically this year, he could. We don't know yet. He's taking over the he's taking over the reins. But if if these guys want to be seen. And try to get another deal out of the out of the whole, you know, get another bag, so to speak. Um, they'll go to Buffalo. They'll rotate with Von Miller, be mercenaries, as as Ryan said, and then they'll they'll try to get another contract somewhere else. So taking a little bit now to get a lot later would probably be the best, you know, the best course of action for these guys. And and it, it just cra- cracks me up too because the fact is you've had the free agency period. All almost all the rosters are at ninety. And mm-hmm. these guys are still here. Make sure you hit all of our socials, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Uh, today's show is sponsored by Mr. Rogers Homes in association with Cryer.co. If you're listening to us on iTunes and Spotify, you're not missing anything. we got faces for radio. So we are out of here. Thanks for joining us, guys. <laughs> See you later.